Hi, and welcome to this special broadcast directly from our studios at Cornerstone Baptist Church in Orlando, Florida. My name is Edgar, and today I have a special treat for all the women who are listening, and it's a special invitation to our 2015 Women's Conference under the title, Tested and True, Women and the Truth of Christian Suffering. This Women's Conference will be hosted at Cornerstone Baptist Church the 17th and 18th of July. The women will greatly enjoy a time of fellowship, joyful worship and music, and biblical teaching. And speaking of biblical teaching, allow me to present our special guest who is joining us via phone all the way from Tulsa, Oklahoma, Miss Susan J. Heck. Thanks for taking the time to join us on this broadcast, Susan. It's a pleasure to be here again. Thanks for having me. Susan, in our last broadcast, you spoke to the women listening about the second and third session titled, What to Do in the Fiery Furnace. And it definitely seems that Florida weather is not the only thing that's going to be hot that week at Cornerstone. Uh, But I'd like to move on to the next session that's on the itinerary for the conference. Uh, And the title of that one is, Four Reasons to Avoid Pride. Share with us what are some of those reasons. Sure, I'd be glad to. You know, Edgar, pride is really a sin that plagues every one of us, uh, Christian, uh, even Christians included. And uh, because at the root of every sin that you and I commit is pride, and that's why we sin, because we're prideful. And pride is an awful sin. It, it elevates us above God. It says we know we have a better way of doing things. And so, um, you know, pride can come in subtly. Um, we may appear to be uh, to be humble to others, but um, you know, I think we have to be very careful because we can mask pride so easily. And uh, for the Christian, for the life of the believer, there should be no pride. And I know that that's something we fight every single day. And, uh, you know, John uh, says in his gospel, you know, he must increase, I must decrease. And yet we know that even the disciples were arguing, who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus is very clear that we must humble and humble ourselves if we're going to uh, be exalted. And so I, uh, Peter also talks about that. And uh, so he gives us four reasons to avoid pride in his epistle and uh, of First Peter. And so we're going to look at those together. And and I hope that the women will um, not come with an attitude. You know, that's not that's not a problem I have, and and I don't struggle with pride because uh, we all do. And um, if we want to avoid uh, this awful sin, we must realize that God resists us if we're proud. And that, to me, is the number one reason for me to avoid pride personally is because I don't want God to resist me. And Peter says God resists the proud. That means he is setting up his army against you. And God's face will not be favorable towards you if you are a prideful person. And so uh, I, I want God's favor towards me. And so we need to remember that also uh, in order to avoid this awful sin of, of pride, we must humble ourselves and, and realize that if, if we don't uh, humble ourselves, we are, are putting ourselves at the opportunity for Satan. And Peter talks about that, that the, if you don't humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, he won't exalt you in due time. And he talks about the fact that the roaring lion, the Satan, will come after you and devour you. And I think sometimes as Christians, maybe we've, we've gone so against the, the charismatic movement of our day, the, the prosperity gospel and things like that, that we don't realize that we do have an enemy. And for women, it's not their husbands. It is Satan. And he wants to eat our lunch. He wants to kill and destroy you. And so if you do not uh, uh, humble yourself in the mighty hand of God and get rid of that pride, you leave an open foot for Satan, a door for Satan to come in. And um, I've seen many women spiral downward because of, of that and allowing them to, uh, Satan a foothold in their life. And so uh, pride is an awful sin, and we want to fight against it. We want to rid ourselves of it. And so, um, as I said, I hope the women will come, especially to this session, because I think that um, there are some subtle ways that pride creeps in that we're perhaps not even aware of, even in our thought life. And that's why it's so important that we get a control of our thoughts because uh, we might not look outwardly like we're prideful. We might look like the Pharisees, you know, where we look great outwardly, but inwardly we're full of deceit and hypocrisy. And so we want to even look at the inner woman and to get rid of those prideful thoughts that maybe no one sees but us and God. And so uh, we're going to look at these four reasons to avoid pride. And so I hope the women will come and um, 
examine themselves to see what areas of pride that they have in their own life. Susan, can you give the women listening perhaps one simple example of how they can fight the sin of pride in their life? One simple way. Boy, that's a loaded question. Um, I think for me, um, it is looking um, back to the cross and from where I came before I was a Christian. Um, I was involved in all cor- types of sinfulness and lawlessness. And I, I, when I look back to where I've come from, I, and that God saved a wretch like me, and to look at his attributes and who he is and the fact that he sent his son to die for me, that humbles me because I know what a wretch I am. And so I would say the one thing to do is to look back at themselves, if they would really examine themselves and their sinful, wretched heart and how depraved they are and that God would save. Uh, I think, I think I can't remember who it was, one of the Puritans, I think, remember that uh, you are a great sinner and that Christ is a great Savior. And so I think as we think about that, that we are a great sinner and he is a great savior, then that does um, humble us and help us to avoid the awful sin of pride. Thank you so much, Susan, for sharing a little bit of the great teaching that is to come. And for all the women that are out there who are listening, let me encourage you to register today so you can be a part of our 2015 Women's Conference under the title, Tested and True, Women and the Truth of Christian Suffering. This conference will be hosted at Cornerstone Baptist Church the 17th and 18th of July. Uh, You will enjoy a great time of fellowship, joyful worship, and biblical teaching. So take advantage and register today. You can do that online at www.testedandtrue.net. Once again, www.testedandtrue.net. And if you have any questions or need help with the registration process, please give us a call here at our church offices at 407-971-7685. 407 971 7685. Thank you so much for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you at the conference. God bless you.